Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jamani Williams, Chair of the Com Committee on Housing and Buildings, and I'm joined today by uh, Councilmember Salamanca, Councilmember Grodenchik, Councilmember Rosendahl, Councilmember Levine, and Councilmember Vaca. We are here to hold a vote on two packages of bills, and perhaps now I won't get tweeted as much anymore. The first package relates to tenant harassment. This package includes legislation to expand the definition of harassment to apply to additional acts, allow tenants who have been victims of harassment to receive monetary compensation, and to create a rebuttable presumption that harassing acts or omissions with, were, were committed with the intent of causing tenants to vacate their dwellings. I'm also sponsoring a bill in this package which would increase the penalties for tenant harassment. Second package of bills, known as the Stand for Tenant Safety Package, ensures that tenants are protected from unscrupulous landlords and contractors engaging in construction of tenant harassment. In addition to these two packages, the committee will be voting on proposed intro number 1133A, sponsored by Councilman Mavaca, which required the Department of Buildings to withhold certain building permits for certain properties where $25,000 or more in unpaid charges are owed to the city or where the owners of such properties owe in aggregate $25,000 or more in unpaid charges to the city. The bill provides certain exemptions to this, this prohibition, such as where the permit would be required to correct the dangerous condition. On the first two, I think this uh, council is doing an amazing job trying to get ahead of a problem that is only growing in terms of harassment in general, and then harassment as a way to push people out of their uh, uh, apartments is in, uh, an incredible problem in many, many communities, so I'm proud of us. And I'm proud to be a sponsor of Councilman Vaca's bill. Uh, we've often tried to figure out how to get uh, owners uh, to fix things or to pay up, uh, and uh, we have had a difficult time getting people to pay up. And I think Councilman Vaca has found a great way uh, to get in their pockets uh, so maybe they'll start listening. So I'm thankful for his work on this bill and proud to be a sponsor. I'm going to allow the sponsors of all of the bills who are here now, which is only three, uh, to have two minutes to give their opening statement. They can take less if they would like to. I will have Councilmember Vaca, Councilman Rosenthal, and Councilmember Levine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my bill being passed by the committee today is intro 1133, and I call it the bad actors law, and it remedies an issue I've sought to address since my first term in the council. It remains an issue I'm passionate about today. New York City is owed a tremendous amount of money in unpaid Department of Building fines. The total amount owed now exceeds $900 million. A large portion of these fines are owed by bad actors, owners and developers that persistently flaunt our city's laws and building codes. There is a massive amount of building and development in this city, and my legislative le proposal allows the city to address the fact that there are some good developers and owners and that there are also some absolutely terrible ones. Right now, DOB essentially treats all permit seekers the same, regardless of the applicant's history. Previous abuses and outstanding fines on separate job sites, no matter how numerous or egregious, are not enough to stop DOB from issuing another permit to do more damage and to rack up more fines. My legislation would change this. It would ensure that DOB takes into account property owners and developers' past actions and that they deny certain building permits to those with outstanding debts in excess of $25,000. Those permits would include new building permits, demolition permits, public assembly permits, and alteration one permits. An owner should not be rewarded with a permit to build more when they already have such large unpaid fines. I want to thank the council staff, and I want to thank the chairman for their consideration, the speaker as well, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Councilman Rosenthal, Councilman Levine. Uh, sorry, I didn't expect to speak because we were all trying to be so appropriate. Um, well, I just want to thank you, Councilmember Williams, for your patience and um, helping, you know, to shepherd through these 19 bills. Um, I think that in my office, we have a limited set of tools to help the people who come in who are being harassed out for any myriad uh, number of reasons. They make up, these landlords make up new stuff every day. Um, and it's so hard to stay on top of it. 
and with these new tools, you'll be helping, we'll be helping um, all of our constituents, but also the people who are striving to help those people. Um, and of course, the one that you know I'm most thrilled about is the Office of the Tenant Advocate, um, which will level the playing field for tenants so they can be on par with the status of the landlords um, when trying to work through construction. So thank you for that. All right. Th thank you, uh, Chair Williams. To everyone who was tweeting you online, they should know that shepherding 19 bills to conclusion like this is an unbelievably complicated task, and uh, you deserve great credit for making that happen. This committee's name is the Committee on Housing and Buildings. And the fact that we are exploiting the power of the Buildings Department to protect tenants really is uh, a game change um, for tenants who are facing um, the use of construction as a weapon to push them out. Uh, that, is the, that is the challenge that has led us to action here. And I'm pleased to be sponsoring one of the bills that addresses this, Intro 936, which is going to require a um, – robust and publicly available posting of a tenant protection plan when construction is being done in buildings where people are still residing, a plan that covers everything from means of egress to fire safety to noise reduction to the health code related to particulate matter. Um, the days of vague plans, which are not easily accessible to tenants, are over uh, thanks to this bill. Um, and again, I want to thank the chair for bringing this and the entire package up for a vote today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for the words. And uh, just reading something that Councilman Rosenthal said, I think I was speaking to one of the reporters talking about how we we're trying to get ahead of this. And then one thing I said is uh, the folks who are dedicated to doing bad things are crafty, uh, and they will find something else, and we'll have to get ahead of that as well. Uh, but I think we're up to the challenge. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, the people who actually really did the work uh, they did to, uh, to assemble this hearing and the bills, including Mike Toomey, my legislative director, Megan Chen and Guillermo Patino, counsel to the committee, Jose Conde, policy analyst to the committee, and Sarah Gasolum, the committee's finance analyst, on this gargantuan task. Congratulations to all of them. With that, I'd like to ask the clerk to call the roll. Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on housing and buildings. All items are coupled. Chair Williams. Proud aye on all. Levine. Vote aye on all. Rosenthal. I did. Proudly vote aye on all. Gordenchik. Uh, with congratulations to all the sponsors and uh, thanks to uh, Jimmy Vaca uh, with that great bill on the bad actors, aye on all. Salamanca. I would like to congratulate all the sponsors as well. And if possible, if you can add me on to all the bills that I'm not listed on, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sergeant, we don't, do we have a hearing here after this? All right, so I'd like to leave uh, the vote open for 30 minutes and thank all of my colleagues.